We accumulate a lot of little treasures in life. No question about it. They might be souvenirs from a trip, might be a gift that someone has given us, might be an heirloom. And some of these treasures might even have value. If you ever watch the Antique Roadshow, you discover how that thing that was in the, closet, or in the attic all these years suddenly is worth a whole lot. Other things don't have intrinsic value, but great value to us, maybe personal, sentimental value, like the photo albums, those pictures that go back two and three and four generations for the families. A woman told me that she had a couple of photo albums put away very carefully in the basement, and the basement flooded. And it hurt her so deeply because she had not thought ahead. Note to self, keep those photo albums high and dry. By the way, I used that same example last night at the 5 o'clock Mass, and a woman came up to me after Mass, and she said, I'm one of those people who kept the photos upstairs carefully, and then we were hit by a tornado. <laughs> I guess you can't cover everything. Then there are those things that we find to be treasures, but they turn out not to be so, so valuable to other people. Earlier this week, I, I sent out the midweek meditation. I was talking about how I had gone through old books, and I was trying to uh, get rid of some things. And a man in the parish wrote back an email, and he said, he has lots of books. And pretty much at the urging of his kids, his adult kids, and his wife, he started going through those books, and he found 250 books he was willing to part with. Put them in big boxes, six boxes, six big boxes, 250 books. That's a lot of books. That's heavy. Drove them to a used bookstore down in Columbus to sell them. And the owner of the bookstore very dutifully and carefully went through every book and looked at its condition and uh, the topic and you know, whether, what, whether or not there'd be a market for it. Went through all of them, took a lot of time, and then he finally said to this parishioner, I'll take them for you, and I can pay you $32.46. What may be valuable treasures to us don't have that value for someone else. We all have treasures. We accumulate them, and then we start letting them go. But what is the treasure buried in the field? There are lots of little treasures, but what is the treasure? The treasure buried in the field. You know, Jesus was a master at storytelling, but one of the things he often did was he alluded to something that people were already familiar with. And at the time of Jesus, people were discovering treasures buried in fields. And the story behind it is simply previous centuries generations, the people had been overrun by other countries, the Assyrians, the Babylonians, and uh, lots of, even up to the Romans, and lots of times the people with wealth, on the fear that they might get deported, took their valuables and they buried them. There were treasures buried in fields. So apparently when Jesus told the story, this was something that was kind of a universal thing that people always kind of wished. Oh, I hope I find the treasure in the field. But it was also something that occasionally happened. What is the treasure buried in the field? It's not a photo album, as, as important that, as that is to our heart. It's got to be something more. In this parable, Jesus uses, there's three parts. He talks about the treasure. He talks about the kingdom of heaven is like the treasure. And then the third part, the man sells everything and pursues the field to have the treasure. So Jesus basically says, the beginning of this parable, just like the next one about the pearl of great price, Jesus starts off by saying, it's the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven that we're talking about. And when you hear both phrases, the kingdom of heaven is in Matthew's gospel, kingdom of God is used sometimes too. And I've learned over the years, whenever I talk about that as being the treasure, I notice that a lot of people, they can't quite wrap their heads around it. 
What does this mean, the kingdom of heaven? Maybe it's the word the kingdom. It's more than a, a place. It's a realm. It's a way of living. And heaven. We're still so conditioned that we, when we hear the word heaven, we think of, well, after I die, I hope I go to heaven. And by the way, I hope we do. But that's not what Jesus preached. When he talked about the kingdom of heaven, he was talking about a here and now. Maybe the mistake we make is to think of what is the kingdom of heaven instead of how is the kingdom of heaven. Because the kingdom of heaven is about a relationship. It's how we live, how we interact. And basically the answer is we're in the kingdom of heaven when we behave as Jesus behaved. It's about our willingness to be selfless. It's when we seek justice and concern and compassion for all people, not just when it's easy or not, those, not just for those that we like. The kingdom of heaven is when we care for others more than for ourselves. The kingdom of heaven is when our decision-making, our daily value system is based not just on what's expedient or what's going to enrich me personally, but that's something that is good for everyone. And when we have that, we get a taste of the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is the, bur the treasure buried in the field. But there's one more part, and that's the fact that the man who found it sold everything to get that tr field. So I ask the question, what are we willing to lay down our lives for? There's a lot of little treasures, but what are we willing to lay our life down for? I've been um, enamored for a number of years with all things Latin American. I just love the study of uh, everything south of our border through Mexico, Central America, South America. I, anytime I see a book like that or a movie, I, I'm intrigued. But one of the things that has often caught my attention is how the great explorers, and many of them were European, 100 years ago in the early 20th century, went down into the jungles of South America, uh, into Peru and Colombia and Ecuador and Brazil, and followed the, the rivers and because they were trying to find the famed city of gold. Many people went in. Many did not come out. Some went in two or three times. And there are many books written about they never really found that. Maybe there is no such thing. But what were they think, uh, seeking that they were willing to lay down, down their lives for? Fame, wealth, glory of some sort, maybe the adventure itself. And as much as I like exploring and discovering things, I'm not willing to do it for a city of gold. Jesus is not telling us to make that the treasure in the field. Not the city of gold, but the kingdom of God.